Going Linux, episode 311, Connecting to a Remote Desktop. Welcome to the Going Linux Podcast. I'm your host, Larry Bushy. Whether you are new to Linux, upgrading from Windows to Linux, or just thinking about moving to Linux, this podcast will provide you with valuable information and advice that will help you in Going Linux. We hope that you'll find this and all of our episodes helpful in learning about Linux and open source applications and using them to get things done. In today's episode, Connecting to and controlling a remote computer's desktop. Well, hello, Going Linux listeners. Yes, it's just me again today. And in our episode today, we're revisiting a topic that my co-host Tom and I had discussed back in 2010 over a couple of episodes. And it is remote desktop or remote controlling another computer from your computer's desktop. Back in 2010, in episode 114, when Tom and I talked about this, our recommendation was to use Vinagre, which at the time was Ubuntu's version of remote desktop that used the VNC protocol to control another computer. Well, although VNC is still available today, the technology has really progressed a lot since 2010. And as a result, our recommendations have changed as well. So in today's environment, we are recommending X2Go. And that is the letter X, the number two, and the word go. The practical reason for recommending that these days is that it's more secure and more flexible. So we're going to step through how to install X2Go, how to create a connection between two computers, and how to start up that connection and begin controlling a remote computer's desktop. We also have an article on our website that goes into step-by-step detail. So if you prefer something written, we'll have a link in the show notes. First, installing X2Go. X2Go comes in two parts. It comes with a server application that you use on the remote computer. That's the computer that you want to control. And the second part is a client application that is installed on the computer that is local to you. In other words, the computer that you want to use to control the remote computer. So let's start with installing the X2Go server. So remember, the server is the one that goes on the remote system. Installing the X2Go server application on a remote computer is particularly easy on Ubuntu Mate. So we'll walk you through that method. And if you use a different version of Linux, you can look in the software center or software manager or software repositories for your particular distribution to find the X2Go server application. And if you can't find it there, we'll have a link to the X2Go wiki in the article and in the show notes so that you can go there and read information about how to get X2Go server. In Ubuntu Mate, installing software is most simply done from the software boutique. It comes with your Ubuntu Mate installation, and you get to the software boutique by going to the system menu in the top panel, then select administration, and then software boutique. Now you can go to the servers category and find X2Go at the bottom of the list there, or you can simply use the search feature in the software boutique to search for the word remote or the name of the application X2Go. If you're doing the search on the word X2Go, you'll find that there is a server and a client. Since we're installing the server, that's the one you want to pick. The button on the right-hand side that says install, go ahead and click that. Wait a few minutes and it's installed. It's as simple as that. When the installation is complete, you may need to click launch to get the server started, but you're ready to go at that point on the remote computer. 
Now let's talk about installing the X2Go client on your local computer. So remember the local computer is the computer that you want to use to control the remote one. Installing the X2Go client application on the local computer is even easier. Again, these instructions are for Ubuntu Mate, and if you use a different version of Linux, look for the X2Go client in your software center or software manager. It's likely there. Open the Software Boutique from the Ubuntu Mate menus by going to System, Administration, Software Boutique, and use the search feature to find X2Go or Remote. Look for the X2Go client, make sure that's the one you select, and click the Install button. When the installation is complete, click Launch, and the X2Go client will start. If you want to find it in the menus, the X2Go client is in the Applications menu under Internet, and there you'll find X2Go client. Strangely, the X2Go server that you installed on the remote computer has no selection in the menu system for X2Go server, so you won't find it there. But then again, it's a server application, so it should be running when you start your computer and you really don't need to change any of the settings for any of it to work. And as a result, there's really no reason to have it in the applications menu at all. Now that you have the X2Go client installed on your local computer, and the X2Go server installed on the computer that you want to control, let's talk about setting up the X2Go client in order to make the first connection. Before you begin setting up the X2Go client, go to the server computer and get one piece of information that you'll need to make this work. That information is the IP address of the remote computer. One way to get that IP address information is to go to the remote computer, click on the network connection icon in the top panel, or if you have a different desktop environment than Mate, it might be in the lower panel, and select connection information from the menu. The connection information window opens, and somewhere on that list will be the IP address. It's the IPv4 address that you're looking for that has four numbers separated by three periods or dots. So once you have that piece of information, go back to your local computer where the X2Go client is installed and open the X2Go client. From the menus, select Session, New Session, and complete the information about your connection. Give this session a name in the Session Name field. Then, in the Host field, enter in the IP address for the remote computer. Then, in the Login field, enter the login name for the user you log in as on the remote computer. The remainder of the fields in that Server section in the window should be just fine with the default values. In fact, SSH port of 22 and no checkboxes checked and the RSA DSA key with a blank field will work just fine for most users. The remainder of the setup will be to select your session type. And you can make a selection here for a desktop you use on the remote computer. But if you actually want to connect to that computer and control the desktop as it is being viewed by the user of that computer, you need to select a session type of connect to local desktop. Now, this is the local desktop for the remote computer. I know that's a little bit confusing, but if you're sitting at the remote computer, it's your local desktop. Um, that's why it's labeled Connect to Local Desktop. You don't need to enter anything in the, into the command field. Just click OK, and your session is set up and ready to go. You can make other changes to the session preferences later on like changing the icon uh, or changing the default screen size for the session 
All of that's changeable by editing the session preferences. And much of it is also changeable as you're in the session itself. Now that you've got the X2Go server installed on the remote computer and the X2Go client installed on the local computer, and you've configured the settings for your first connection, now let's just go and make that connection and begin controlling the remote computer. Of course, that computer needs to be turned on and running and ready to go. On the local computer, all you need to do with the X2Go client running is look on the right hand panel of the X2Go client window. You'll see the configuration that you just set up. Click on that if it's not already selected. The username should already be there and just enter your password for the remote computer. Click OK to start your session. The first time you make the X2Go session connection, you will be prompted to trust the certificate for that connection. You'll need to do that only once, so go ahead and accept that. Now, every time you start the X2Go session, you'll be asked whether or not you want to control the desktop or if you want to simply view what's going on on that desktop. If you want to control it, select Full Access. Otherwise, select View Only. Now the remote computer's active desktop will open in a window on your local computer. You can change the size of that window, just like you would any other applications window, and you can control the other computer from within that window. To close a session without shutting down the remote computer, simply close that window. And that's it. We've talked about how to install the client and the server application for X2Go, how to configure a session, and how to make the connection. You should be ready to go with X2Go. Our next episode will be a listener feedback episode. Until then, you can go to our website at goinglinux.com for articles and show notes, as well as links to download and subscribe. We are the website for computer users who just want to use Linux to get things done. And if you like, you can participate directly with our friendly and helpful community members by joining the discussion in our Going Linux podcast, Google Plus community. Until next time, thanks for listening. Theme music provided by Mark Blasco at podcastthemes.com. So today we're revisiting a topic that my co-host Tom and I had discussed back in 2010 over a couple of episodes, and it is remote desktop or remote controlling another computer from your computer's applications and using them to get things done. In today's episode, connecting to and controlling a remote computer's desktop. Well, hello, Going Linux listeners. Yes, it's just me again today and in our episode's desktop. Back in 2010, in episode 114, when Tom and I talked about this, our recommendation was to use Vinagre, which at the time was Ubuntu's version of remote Going Linux, episode 311. Connecting to a remote desktop. Welcome to the Going Linux Podcast. I'm your host, Larry Bushy. Whether you are new to Linux, upgrading from Windows to Linux, or just thinking about moving to Linux, this podcast will provide you with valuable information and advice that will help you in Going Linux. We hope that you'll find this and all of our episodes helpful in learning about Linux and open source